What is going on guys? Today we're looking at the best meta players under 1 million coins. Let's go. So, 11 players is in each of these teams, positions, whatever you want to call them. Goalkeepers, we rattle through pretty quickly because realistically, once you get over the 820,000k mark, that's every goalkeeper in the game. There is not one higher than Allison, so you can choose and it's not a problem. I'm still running Courtois. Van der Sar is normally my favorite. Every keeper on this list, personally, I've seen quite a lot in the past week, two weeks, three weeks of whenever they've actually came out, and they all do the same job. I don't personally think there is a goalkeeper that is head and shoulders above the rest. They may be better in some people's eyes, but realistically, I just go for the untradeable goalkeeper. If I've got the team of the year, I'll use the team of the year. If I've got Van der Sar, I'd probably use him. Check, Van Nistelrooy, Casillas, all are the same. Courtois is my untradeable, and he's done the business for quite some time. Now, this is where we get a bit more interesting. Getting into the actual positions that do cost a little bit. From what I've seen, fullbacks, goalkeepers tend to be relatively cheaper. When it comes to centre-backs, you can make it as expensive as you want. And this game has gone light years above the rest. I'm so used to making 100k, 200k, 400k teams. We're now looking at, well, I did a 500k team on another channel. And I'm like, the, the players are just nowhere near the level of what we've got. There is so many players way above a million coins in everybody's team. It is crazy. And obviously, it's gamble SBCs, it's packs, you get lucky. There, there's just a crazy amount. You cannot make a 500k team that would almost battle with the elite division. It just wouldn't happen. They would be so far superior. So let's look at the fullbacks. So in terms of kind of what we're looking at right back, I've got a few names. And to be honest, a lot of them have different versions. Carfu has a Thunderstruck. We have Evolutions. We have Team of the Years. Frimpong still to this day, other than the long ball pass, looks phenomenal in the Thunderstruck. Now we've got the Team of the Year. We can see what he is actually capable of. And that card is an absolute absolute joke but this still card is still fantastic nonetheless he's gonna do the business reese james one of my favorite uh premier league right backs other than walker to be honest avila like walker has just been there for absolute time james is definitely coming in and it is a shame he is just so injury prone because he could have an insane record of stats by now in terms of fifa card it would be unreal but unfortunately he has got to go with out of position well out of performance based cards at the moment we have got Cancelo, who, to be honest, has been a little bit quiet for cards. He got himself a team in the group stage, a trailblazer, normal gold. I think he's had an inform as well. But in terms of kind of right now, he's definitely on the lower end of this budget video. Carfu, he has got an SBC and is definitely one of the best you can get from an SBC, hands down. Carfu is amazing. You can get his normal, you can get his Thunderstruck. They both give you an unbelievable right back role. And to be honest, at the minute, I'm still using Lorente Evolutions as a right back. Then we move over to the left backs. I always have to mention Backer and Havertz. That is the mention. I've got Backer at the moment, but we still have an crazy amount of names. Davis has obviously got his Thunderstruck that you can buy. I try not to include SBCs that are currently not available, but if you did do his flashback, still a phenomenal card that would have been in this budget. We have got multiple Teo Hernandez's. I'm pretty sure this guy has got three informs by now, 86, 87, 88. I have gone for the more expensive one purely to get that playstyle plus. The other versions, unfortunately, don't have it. And he does have a team of the year that I believe, if he's still there, 5.4 million coins. Wow. We have got Balde. He has a winter wild card. He has obviously a future star. Can play left back, right back, still very much like Lamperty. 745, which is very expensive, but the quick step and intercept is not a bad combination. This could be a perfect card later on in the game for a CDM center mid shapeshifter. Or if they wanted to really bump up that shooting, give him a plus 30, 40, could be a good winger in the future. So that's one to definitely look at. But again, a very good left back that is coming very, very soon. Lazarazu, absolutely rate him at 400. Love the heroes. And I cannot wait for Foot Fantasy to actually get some more heroes. As I feel like the icons have been put on that pedestal. And heroes have just literally been left to rot. It's not how I thought this game would have gone. I really thought heroes was 
the new icon trend. We saw a lot more icons potentially leaving, heroes coming in at their full. We've got so many now compared to last year and the year before. It is interesting to see what sort of direction we're going with them. What is the difference between a hero and an icon? Who gets them? Are we running out of icons? Are we just going into the heroes? What's the licensing issue with all of them? That is kind of where we're looking at with these heroes, but most definitely the icons are still in full swing. And Roberto Carlos is still at the top of the pile he has got himself a future star that is mwah, it is a beautiful card but that is also coming in at a whopping price i'm pretty sure he's 92 and he's still coming in at 2 million coins that's what i mean a left back at 2 million and he's not even a team of the year is absolutely crazy if your team's looking like this then i have the place for you head over to u7 buy for all your coin needs they're cheap fast and reliable but make sure to use jt11 at the checkout for six percent off all of your coin orders. Now into the center back roles. So we've got a lot of big names here. First and foremost, you mention him every time, has to be. Can be any version of this guy. Gold, Inform, Nike, Winter Wildcard, trying to think of the last one, and also Team of the Year. All of them are brilliant. Whatever you can get. If you've got him untradeable, brilliant. If you've got his Team of the Year, phenomenal. It's a 15 million coin Team of the Year. And every year he's exactly the same. I kind of... It will be interesting to see what happens after because he reminds me very much in FIFA terms of this man. In everybody's team, Ramos was prevalent. He was the perfect center back. The build was perfect. The pace, defending, physical, passing, everything was spot on. Now, Virgil is the new center back. He is what everybody wants and the gold is still the best card you can get for price on this game, full stop. I believe even by the end of it, he still will be a top, top center back nonetheless. We have got Bright, probably one of the cheaper team of the years, I must admit. The team of the years are an impeccable price, but she definitely comes in still with a bit to give. 94 on the defending, 96 physical. You've got the pair, the pace. Dribbling and passing are not necessarily woeful. And you've got Bruiser and Ariel. She could definitely still give a run for the money 100%. We've got Ramos, we've got Alberto, company, some absolutely impeccable de uh, defenders that you can go with. Like I said with Ramos, he still comes in. I would personally prefer the CDM role, but the center back is still just as good. Alberto, I personally like him as a center back and then have Carfu as the right back. Easy position switch and company is definitely one of them center backs that is coming in like the Virgil and Ramos. The in-game ability of him is still very, very good. He has everything you need. If it was him instead of Virgil at this point, I feel like he would definitely be the go-to center back. So it'll be interesting to see later on down the line where he actually goes to. We have Rudiger, Saliba, Militao. Militao has always been brilliant. Ever since that first ever team of the season for Porto, he has just gone from stride to stride. And still to this day, maybe yes, could do with the upgrade now, but for birthdays coming around the corner, could he be the man? And Saliba, he does have another version that has gone, but it was under the price as well in his team of the year honorable. If you've obviously gone for the evolution, I still think he is definitely a must center back if you haven't got a second option to Virgil. And Rudiger, he's my probably my least favorite out of the kind of bottom tier here. Possibly even, he possibly just goes over Cannavaro, depending on what you want from a center back. But he is definitely still a top center back just out of the the top of the top in this in this category he's definitely not the one i'd spend 660 on rio i feel like has definitely come to me after seeing that team of the year and is still as good as ever anticipate is my personal favorite as a play style plus obviously i have virgil so there's the aerial covered anticipate is normally the second one i like to go for hence varan's in here as well even though yes again Maybe not going to get many performance-based cards. He is always loved by EA because they know how meta this card really is. And Cannavaro has definitely switched a lot of heads. We did a review on him when he came out, to be honest. And there has been such a split between people loving him, people hating him for the price. I don't think price is necessarily a bad thing on him. I just think the acrobatic. And I get a lot of people were saying he is acrobatic in his defensive style in real life. That is fantastic. You can do that all he wants. In FIFA, there is no acrobatic in defense unless you are hitting a volley. 
So realistically, that playstyle plus becomes useless. Yes, maybe in real life he was good at it. That is fantastic, but FIFA cannot do that. So that is the only problem I have with the card. Other than that, it's a nice upgrade for him. May not be my number one choice of an upgrade, what I was expecting for him, but it's definitely a better version than his base. Then we have the midfield, and I must admit, there's a lot of card types that are very, very similar design. A lot of icons, a lot of Team of the Year, UCL, <laughs> versus by the looks of it, and also Team of the Year honorables. So let's address the icons first. In terms of CDMs, we're looking at Ricard, uh, <laughs> we're looking at Rikard, and we're looking at Petit. Both of them very similar in what they give. Both of them can play centre-back as well, which is always interesting to know. Rijkaard is an SBC at 280. Petit is a transfer player at 402. If you were to have both of them, you've packed Petit, you want to finish Rijkaard. For me, Petit is the centre-back and Rijkaard is the CDM. Personal preference on playstar pluses. I love the Anticipate as a centre-back and I love Intercept as a CDM. I find them balancing, working really well together. Hence why I'm a big fan of Ramirez. I still stand to Ramirez being from even the hero card. I said this. He is going to be the best box-to-box -box centre mid once he gets that footage. A long time away yet, but when you think of a 96-97 Ramirez, maybe even if he gets the 5-5, a triple play style plus, you've got 90 plus pace, 90 shooting, 90 passing, dribbling, defending, physical. He's already at a Hullet gang level at an 87. You add them extra 5, 6, 7 overalls, that card will be one of the best, 100%. Tamore, very much like Ramos. I personally prefer Ramos if I'm being brutally honest with him, but I do like Tamore's pace on this, but I would have them both run in the same position. Heavy on that DM roll, stick between the lines, stay back, and they both will give you that extra centre-back feel. Kind of like a five-back, but still being able to venture a little bit forward, and Ramos is going to be my favoured out of the two. Orbidorf, again, very much like Bright. Don't overlook her. Bruiser, intercept, incredible stats. You go with the shadow, you go with the anchor, whatever you want to do. She is going to be an absolute rock in that CDM. And even if you don't want her at CDM, she could play center back as well, which is always an interesting turn of events if you don't want her in that midfield. Maybe you want her at the back line. She definitely could still rock a roll, to be honest. It all goes on what your team is. But I think as team of the years go, they are normally always good. They may not be fully meta kind of broken OP, but they definitely will still give you a very, very good feeling. To be honest, with team of the years, I try and keep them in the team as much as possible as they are very hard to get until we get into footies where they're literally like candy. Gerard, another very good centre mid, incisive pink pass. I think are two beautiful play style pluses for him alongside a massive stat upgrade from this card definitely making him a lot more relevant. I can imagine the next icon campaign we get, Lampard will be the next one. It's just bound to be. Whenever we get a Gerard card, just remember Lampard isn't far away. I'm surprised we didn't get a future star Lampard to go with them. They're like chalk and cheese. They... Is that right? Chalk and cheese. They, they just go together, yin and yang. They basically are the same card. They've always been identified as, as each other when growing up in England. Obviously, both of them were very, very similar in their positions, their play styles, their attributes, and most definitely in FIFA, they are normally clumped together. We have Xavi. A lot of people arguing between Xavi and Beckham. I think they are very different players at times, even though, yes, they both focus very much on passing and dribbling. I, I play them in different roles, to be honest. In terms of Xavi, he is that outlet. He's not necessarily the one busting a gut going forward, but his left stick dribbling is great to get out of positions. And then the passing is just as good as Beckham, if not better at times. Beckham, the free kick warrior, somebody who will drag that ball forward, maybe even getting a cheeky long shot every now and then. I don't find Xavi has that potential in shooting. He is the passing Icon that that is him and him and Perlo by the end of the game have 99 passing It's just always what's meant to be whereas Beckham I find is more of the carry the ball forward has a little bit more on the defense But that comes to down to EA's upgrade. It isn't necessarily a Beckham thing I don't think defending was really on his kind of radar and to be honest He's no good as a winger, which is where he played most of his career Then we have Rivaldo lovely upgrade again, maybe one that I wasn't necessarily too happy with. I like the double play star plus. You love the upgrade, but it's just a plus one. We got a massive one from the dynasties from his base because the two in increase on the weak foot was a massive upgrade. We've predominantly just got another upgrade. It's just an inform with a different dynamic slapped on it and flair. 
I don't find that as appealing. I just find that as a little bit lazy at times. If you went to a 93, 94, at least you're getting something for it. Adding an extra two, three, 400K onto his price and just giving him a plus one, I'd rather just go for the 91 left wing if I'm being brutal. We have got Modric, one of the cheaper options today, but definitely a kind of, I wouldn't even say a B-take Xavi because I still think he holds his own in that center mid role. He is more defensive at times and he doesn't necessarily have the double play style plus, but for 220k, that is an impeccable card from the very, very start of the game. And a team partner, team of the year honorable Valverde, incredible. Love his rapid, love the relentless for him because he just works that midfield down to the ground. Very much like Ramirez with an incredible amount of pace on the base and 83 above on everything. That card is going to be a lovely one during team of the season and obviously at the end of the game as well. He is just the perfect centre mid this year. We then go into wingers. Now, in terms of wingers, we've got a lot of options. Very much like every other position, multiple Salas, multiple Dembele's, multiple Liao's, multiple Hansons. There is a lot of cards with a lot of different cards, which is just, where do I pick them? Obviously, we are under, under a million, so a lot of Hansons are more expensive. Well, maybe one of them, in fact. Might be just the team of the year, which is like 7 million plus. I know Salah has got like four cards above this, but all of them are 92. So it, you're arguing one rating difference, to be honest. Liao, he's got himself the road to the final. That's like three, four million still, which is just crazy in itself. They are playing tomorrow, I think, in the Europa. So it'll be interesting to see if he does get the upgrade nonetheless. But where do we start with these wingers? So if we go for the left, I've got Hemp. I've got Kravat Skilia, who can do both. We have Salma, Liao, and I believe Dembele can do both. Yeah, so we've got a decent amount there. Hemp is obviously one of the SBCs that is going. Just quickly check. I should have checked this before, but she is going. How long ago did we get her? Nine days to go. 500k. I think she's brilliant. For 500k, she was definitely one of the best wingers on the left side that you can actually get. When we look at the rest of them, Kravac Skilia, very good in his 2-3-5. Radioactive 5-5, five, five, which is definitely going to have a difference over him. But again, play differently. The whipped pass is a game style. So if you are a crossing merchant, you're definitely going to go for hemp over anybody. Liao with the rapid. I do like him as a striker. And I think once he gets the 94, 95 ratings and above, I would probably prefer him as a powerhouse striker. He's got the pace. If he keeps the rapid plus as well, that's going to be incredible for him going forward. Sama loved her inform very, very quick. 97 pace on the base just opens up the ability to go with any chem style you want because you don't need that hunter. I guarantee you, you will not notice a difference of a plus two on the pace. It just isn't going to happen. It would be milliseconds of what an upgrade would do. So it means you could go for the finisher, which is going to be a very good play style that you can add to her. She had an 86. She's gone up to the 89. She's 612,000. And if we were to whack the finisher on her, 97 pace. What, what is she? She's a 4-4. She'd get 93 shooting and 94 dribbling. Turning herself into a 91 rated card. I think that's definitely one to not overlook, especially with the Liga F Barca team. I would love to see what a best Liga F Barca team will do because they have got some incredible cards from Hansen, Bonmati, Putialis, Petri, Salma, the Nigerian striker, Rolfo. There is a very, very good team there, which will be very interesting to see at the end of the game as well, especially if they are doing the women's team of the year team of the season as well, which again, I'm interested to see where that runs. Right wing on the other hand, Rodman, Saka, Diani, Sala, Dembele if you want to count him, and also Hansen. A lot of big names and a lot to go through. For my favorite, her. Absolutely phenomenal. Striker, right wing, whatever you want to do. I would say more right wing on this version because she has got now the whipped pass and Travella, but she also has an incredible amount of stats. Very, very similar to the Thunderstruck. Just adding the whipped pass, I want to say. I'm pretty sure she had Travella prior to this, but she is just brilliant in game. Give her a try. Rodman coming in at 7.30 now, still dropping a little bit. Quick step, relentless is always nice with a 4-4. Personally, for me, a great super sub. I have Hansen and Rodman as my super subs. As wing-wise, when they overtake Best and Garincha, they just come on and do an absolute storm down the wing. One that I'm surprised hasn't got any more cards, Saka. We have got his road to... What was it? Was it a road to... I think it might have been team of the group stage, actually. 
What did we actually get from him? He was the Champions League, yeah, team in the group stage, which is coming in at 840,000. The only real difference is a play style plus a power shot. Now, to be honest, I'm not really feeling it. He has one on everything, bar from pace. So he keeps his 92 pace, but everything goes up on one compared to this card. Double the value for a power shot plus, even though I do like the power shot, I'm just not willing to spend 400k extra when I could easily get this road to the knockout. It's just a personal preference. Salah's always going to be good. We know what Salah's about. The cut-in's fantastic. I'm obviously waiting for a bigger upgrade from him, and he is very expensive. Every version of him normally comes in at a premium because he is a perfect winger. He's got the dribbling, he's got the shooting, he's got the pace. It's every winger's dream, and he definitely comes in at a premium. As well as Dembele, Again, this is a card that came out at the start of the game. May not be 90 rated to begin with, but now he's up there with a 5-5, five five, a rapid plus. He's just only going to go from strength to strength. Very much like Salma. Lost a little bit on the shooting, though. He's already got the pace at 97. So meaning you can go with the finisher and have no qualms about the pace whatsoever. Then we have the striker, which... Under a million is where I personally like the budget to go for a striker. They're expensive if you want a good one. And to be honest, the cheaper ones are starting to slowly and slowly run out. You're, you're, you're literally just grasping at straws for the final. For like 100k to free 400k, there's only so many that I can be like, yeah, it will do you a good job. But they're never going to compare to these. Some of these are phenomenal strikers, and yet we're still not into the absolute meta. These are just very good strikers. They are not the elite of the elite. There's no Mbappe. There's no Cruyff, Eusebio. There's no uh, kind of a Ronaldo in this at some point, like a winter wildcard. Messi's informs are not in this either. There's just so many top-end strikers that are just coming in at a crazy rate. And this is what I mean. The prices of cards at the moment are at a massive all-time high. And to be honest, I don't know how you get them through coins. I don't think I could physically raise 15 million coins to buy a team of the year Virgil or a 15 mil R9. Don't get me wrong. I don't think there's been ever a year where I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go buy Prime R9 today. It's just never happened. He is a crazy amount always but now we're getting more and more cards i'm like i can't go pay for a road to the final liao he's four million coins and that's a card that to be honest doesn't hold a torch to mbappe and yet he's still four million it's a crazy world that we're in in fc24 but in terms of strikers we have got some new i think james is definitely a great card whether i would put her on the wing it's always a debate a five star four star the rapid the flare Definitely a card that I would argue somewhere in the forward lineup. We have Moi Coco. I love this striker. This is an example of a cheaper striker. I'd say 530k. Like I said, I did a 500k Prem team. He would cost the budget of that team, but he is brilliant. Acrobatic, it is what it is. It's always good if you're looking for a bit of flair in the game. Technical, not terrible as well. You can kind of get used to it. But the 4-5, great uh, pace on him great shooting dribbling's up there he's a brilliant striker big boy Benz 620 I can't imagine we will see a top end Benz by the end of the year 100% but still a brilliant striker going forward he's big he has that strength on him obviously the shooting is always impeccable and obviously radioactive does give him that chemistry boost whether you need it with the amount of icons in people's teams and alongside that the amount of French players in everybody's teams he's going to be absolutely fine we have got Eto, still a tried and tested 540k striker. Personally, my striker alongside Mbappe and still does the business. Definitely could do with the upgrade. So the next campaign, EA, I want an Eto. If it has to be for birthday icons, I'd give him a five star, five star. That Eto would absolutely break the bank and I wouldn't be able to afford him. But we move. Smith, on the other hand, future star. Another little bit of an upgrade. Again, one that I am... A little bit more disappointed because we've got an 89 base, we've got a 90 Centurions, and then a 91. There's not really too much going on with her. She didn't get a weak four skill move upgrade. She got a double play style plus, which has obviously gone from the dead ball into a quick step first touch, which is a bit of an upgrade. But in terms of the actual stats, just a plus one. So unfortunately, even though I do like her as a striker, I'd probably just go for the Centurions to save the cost. You're looking at that card at... 218 in comparison to 510 
it just is what it is for it. Raul, on the other hand, very, very good card. Loved his base. We're now looking at the Winter Wild card. He definitely is one that I'm keeping my eye on whenever we get any campaign launches because he is just brilliant. The 4-5, the pace is still very good enough. And it's one of the cards over the years of having Raul he's just left in the bin. He never was that good. This year I'm finding there is some cards that have definitely popped up and been a lot better. I think Torres is exactly the same. Normally the prime was decent, the prime moment was good, but in terms of the base and mid was a little bit lackluster. This year I absolutely loved base Torres to start with. He got a double upgrade into the winter wildcard and I still think he's a phenomenal striker going forward, especially for just under 700,000. We got our first cheaper double play star plus icon with Zola from team of the year 840 pretty decent with the dead ball and the finesse whether you've already got a dead ball plus on your team I don't think there's any need to have two unless you was going to the absolute what is it uh the absolute having both players I don't know what the word is a left foot and a right foot is basically the terminology I'm trying to think if you are very specific with your team, something along them lines, but we carry on. If he was going for the left foot, right foot, then obviously he is going to be another great option in your team. Whether you'd actually have him over many of these strikers would be the question, because I do think he's a good striker, but I don't think he takes over Raul. I ooh, I'd probably take him over Torres, to be honest. What I might do, if I had if I had the option of three players on this list, what I might do with Zola is put him in that sort of cam role, which is almost like a third striker. If I didn't have wingers, play the two strikers up top, him just behind, and then a base set of two or three midfielders, I think that could work potentially, but it depends on how your team's set up. We have got Tevez. I believe his SBC is expired now. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Gerard, not Torres. We have got him coming in at a whopping for the SBC at 8 for, well, 840 for the price. He's still got there till the 1st of March, 960 for the SBC, very expensive. I don't think that SBC is worth it, if I'm being brutal. I mainly think because this SBC came out on, what, the 5th of February. I guarantee he gets a foot fantasy. Like, imagine, you've done the SBC, 960 down the drain. Here's a 92 Tevez for a foot fantasy. I, I don't know. I could just see it. I know there's a lot more heroes that can be upgraded. Strikers alone, Di Natale and Valer, uh, Valer have to be in that running. But I can just see their sneaky suspicion. Here's an SBC. Go do it. Oh, yeah, we're bringing out a better one. I don't know. Let me know when we get that. Henri, another SBC. Phenomenal to value in terms of what you can get from him. Rapid plus, as always, a very good play style plus you can have on strikers or wingers. 830 is really not terrible for him as well. Yes, he does have a better version that is very, very expensive and most definitely worth the coins at 93 rated. 3.1 mil. Wow. And finally, push gas is just in this list at 990. Probably one of the more elite icons we can get, even though I do think Cruyff, Eusebio, the whole list of them does overtake him. But he definitely is one not to worry about 100% because he still is a very, very top end striker you can get. And that's going to be the list. Let me know down below if there's anybody missed. And hopefully we could do maybe a 1.5 million budget at some point. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe even 2 million. Peace.